Oh, a message from Neil from Real Terrain Hobbies. What's he sending me? Hey guys, this is Neil here with Real Terrain Hobbies, and today we're going to make a What's sweet working diorama on? using a 3D printer. I've got one of them. Ooh, something in the woods. Oh, f Howdo guys, it's Luke at Geek Gaming, and in this video I'm going to take you through how I built this Witcher diorama. First off we're going to build a board using some polystyrene and some 1 inch beading. How we assemble that is we cut it um, to the size of the polystyrene just by simply lining up the polystyrene with the wood and cutting out the size. Once you've cut all the four corners, it's a matter of just pinning them together using some hammer and pins. Once assembled, you'll have a perfect square um, or rectangle that's ready for inserting your foam. The way we do that is just use some um, polyurethane glue. This can be Gorilla Glue, Gator Glue, whichever one you like to use. Push the foam in and give that about 20 minutes to start expanding. Um, the glue turns to a foam which will hold all the polystyrene in place. And then we do the same for any raised areas on the board. Just place it in place, put your polystyrene down in the area that you want and we'll cut it to shape in a second. The way that I do that is I just warm up a, a cheap blade um, just simply heat it up slightly don't overdo this it doesn't have to be too warm but it's just a matter of warming the blade up so when we cut through the polystyrene you get less mess and you get a really nice flat straight cut then I just cut out a rough edge this is the messy bit uh, but you don't have to pay too much attention to this part because we will be adding my modeling compound to this afterwards Weigh that down uh, for about 20 minutes, but while that's drying, we can plan the rest of the diorama. I'm going to put like a little bit of a lake in the corner just to add a little bit more detail and just melt that away with the creme brulee burner. My modelling compound can be purchased from www.geekgaming.co.uk. Um, all you've got to do is add water to this and make, turn it into like a nice slop, um, like uh, tuna mayonnaise, that sort of consistency. Um, and all we've got to do is paste it on and then we can make our really nice natural landforms. The reason that we use this rather than other plasters or clays is because it's very fast drying. It's very easy to work with and all you've got to do is just paste it on like this. You can put some compound under your stones and around the stones. One, to hold them in place and glue them down and two, it helps blend them in easy. After you've got this all in place and you've got it all over your diorama and you've got your natural landforms how you want them, give it around 20 minutes to start firming up. Once it's all nice and firm, just wet your hand a little bit and then you can just smooth it out and blend that into all your rock moulds. Um, any areas where you want some sort of falling earth, you can shape that and sort of sculpt it into the design that you're wanting before going on with the ground covers. Then after, say, 40 minutes, if that, um, we're just throwing on some brown paint. Any brown paint will do. If you're going for like a more deserty setting, use a lighter colour. This doesn't have to represent the colour that it's going to be. It's just a colour just so that when you put the flocks on, it's not going to show through. For the uh, washers on the rock moulds, I'm using the same brown paint with some mucky brush water. Um, I'm actually painting these a lot darker, so I put a very dark black wash on. Um, the reason is is because we're going to go for a frosty sort of winter theme, and when there's snow on there, anything contrasting needs to be darker than it actually would be, um, just so it looks a little bit more realistic. So I'm putting a very strong black wash on. Now for trees, I'm using some sagebush. Um, this can be purchased from Scenic Express, I believe, uh, in the USA. 
Um, they're great for making quick and easy trees and looking great. All I'm doing is I'm finding gaps and breaks in the bottom of the trees and I'm just sticking a nail in with a bit of super glue um, and then attaching some sea foam. This is a bit fiddly, so be patient. Um, some activator does make this job a hell of a lot easier. However, I did run out, so I was having to mess to try and get them in place. Um, but just build them up and till till you get the desired look. Then I use a very dark grey just to dry brush the rock, um, just to get it to the colour that I shows some details. Right, so now we're going to be going on to the ground cover stage now. So throw your PVA glue all over the model, and then we're going to be using the forest floor covers from my range, from forest path to forest ground cover and pine forest ground cover. They can be all bought from Geek Gaming below. Um, we throw on the forest path all over. Now, if you want to be frugal with it, you can do, but what I tend to find is piling up flocks just look better. Um, but however, if you are wanting to save a bit of money, put these in patches where you want them rather than throwing it everywhere like I'm doing. Now, I go on with the forest path first to get the out overall covering. Then I go on to forest floor covering. Um, this has got bits of bark and bits of like orange flake and green flakes in this to represent like a deciduous forest uh, And I put this around the areas where the bushes and the trees are going to be um, And I sort of try and plan where they're going to be before applying this so I can get a, like a an underbrush sort of look before I go any further Then after putting that and I put the pine forest floor covering I was feeling it needed a bit more um, sort of barky and like some pine needles and other sort of forest floor coverings in there so I apply this the other reason why I apply this one is it's slightly darker than the other one as well um, and there's more ground up mulch and bark in there which it looks a hell of a lot stronger in colour and then for like sort of dry fall and bark and just just a generic sort of forest covering we add some brown sawdust as well um, just to add a bit more a few more browns and a bit more colouring in there just so when you look at it there's a good few colours the tip to flocking is literally use as many as you possibly can and try and get as many textures and looks as possible now for the bank embankments I'm mixing in the forest floor covering with some brown sawdust just in with some PVA and I'm adding a bit of water and I'm just going to paste that onto the edge and that's so when it dries and it dries clear it'll just look like a dirt cliff um, without any stones or rocks or anything in it. Um, at the moment the diorama is looking a bit strange but don't worry about it, it will all come together once all the uh, trees, bushes and uh, ferns and everything else are in place. So don't panic, terrain's great, you can fix it with just other things. Now I'm using the arid earth cover, again this does look wrong at this point um, because they're very pale are the rocks, however there's nothing else pale on the dio yet. The way we seal them is by using just some liquid super glue. You could use PVA, I just use liquid super glue so I can carry on moving uh, and not have to slow down too much and knock them around while I'm working. I apply some twigs just to act as like fallen trees and broken branches and some weird angled trees, just as much strange foliage as possible. If you're a follower of the game, you will you see all sorts of wonderful and weird trees and bushes. However, you can't press A on a diorama to smash through them, so <laughs> we just put them where we want them. Break a few branches up and just have them as fallen twigs and branches. Then we just push the trees in, um, just simply push them in. Uh, and we'll glue them down um, when we put the foliage around the trees and everything then. Because um, if you want to change the position, you can do. It's very easy to do so. And the way that we uh, attach them in place is we pour more of the forest ground cover around the base of the trees. And then once we spray and glue all that together, it will just hold them in place and turn to like a nice sort of cement and just hold them. If this was a wargaming piece, though, it would be very different. And then I just apply some more sea foam. Uh, I'm going to go for a bit of a winter look. As I'm building this, I'm feeling that winter would look best. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm applying a bit more sea foam so the snow products and things have more to cling to. Uh, so it's, it's a bit more pleasing on the eye. So I apply some more sea foam and then get ready for some ferns. 
For ferns, I use the tree canopy foliage sheet from my range. The whole reason why I use this moss is because it looks like little ferns. It's a very nice moss. It's great for trees. It's great for underbrush and ferns like this. So great for jungle bases and forest, forest dioramas and wargaming needs. If you'd like to buy any of that, get it from my shop below at geekgaming.co.uk. Now I apply this all over the place. I add quite a lot. I build it up on top of each other um, and to lock all that in place I just spray it all with the uh, Luke's APS Scenic Glue and that'll lock it all in place but we can carry on working on top of this while it's still damp. Next up, gauze bushes and more like dead bushy foresty stuff. I hope, I'm just going to use pure sea foam for this. I'm not going to do anything special with it apart from pull it apart and stick it back together and then spray it with a black spray can and then hit it with a grey spray can from above. If you was going for a more summery type uh, dio, just spray it like a really dark brown uh, and then obviously apply flocks like you would if you were making trees uh, and that would give you a very nice finish as well. But because we're going for winter, I want them leafless um, and it looks it makes really nice sort of gauze just heavy foliage uh, for around the trees and on top of the ferns. Extra plants for not much work. Now, I wanted some tufts to break through the snow, um, so I'm going to show you how uh, to make some if you've got like a static grass applicator. I'm using some 6mm dead grass from the Luke's APS range, and just simply put the Luke's APS basing glue down, and then use your static applicator or your flop box, and then go over the top until you've got some lovely dead tufts. Now to apply the grass tufts, all I do is I use a bit more glue on the bottom of them and I just stick them in places near more foliage. Um, I don't understand how and where grass grows, obviously where it's wet, um, but just put it where the other plants are and just be as creative as you want with this. Put as many or as little as you like. And once you've got all that done, it should look pretty cool. To be fair, I was thinking it looked quite nice at this point. I was thinking, maybe shall I, shall I not do snow? But I thought, stuff it. I've got a new snow product that I absolutely love. Let's learn to play it and let's get it all over these trees and all over the new foliages. So what you're going to do is just spray that down again with the, the scenic glue and spray it all over, completely soak it through. Once you've done that, find yourself a, the finest sieve you possibly can find. Grab a bag of the Luke's APS snow powder and then sieve that all over your diorama till you get the desired look. What's good about this snow powder, it doesn't react with any glues or sprays, it doesn't disappear or dissolve. Um, so the look that you get when you put it down is more or less the look you'll get uh, once it's dry. And that's why I prefer it. A lot of flo uh, snow flocks and stuff that I've used in the past, they, they disappear, they blow away, uh, or they dissolve into the glues and with the solvents and everything else that you use. With this, you put it down and it's going to look how you put it down. So you can sprinkle it, you can use a sieve. For heavier snow, just pile it up like you would a normal flock. And then to seal that in place, just more scenic glue. If it was dry, if the piece was dry and you didn't want to wet it through again, you could use like a good strong polyurethane varnish through a spray can. But I find just scenic glue's fine. Then I paint the small watery area that we're doing just with a bit of dark brown and some bone colours. Uh, and quickly sort of blend them together. I don't overdo this because we're going to add the same colours to the resin later. I use a black wash to darken the back end up. And once that's dry, um, all we've got to do is apply some uh, decorating tape, uh, masking tape, just around the edge where we're going to pour the resin. To make sure that we don't get any leaks or anything like that, um, apply some glue around the bottom, PVA glue, wood glue, whatever you want to do. However, I have found that when you do this, don't apply as much glue as me, because if you leave it for quite a while, it gets to the point where <laughs> you can't peel the uh, tape off, as you'll see later. I'm using CFS Epoxy Clear Resin. Uh, if you'd like to buy that with a bit of a discount, check the links below where you can get 10% off your epoxy resins. And apply this into a container 50-50 and then we're going to mix in a bone colour that we use to paint the bottom of the 
lake or whatever we're going to call it, the water feature. Don't put much in though because paint really dyes and pigments uh, the epoxy. If you're using inks, you can get away with using a bit more, but with paint, be, proceed with caution. Um, we're wanting this to look like sort of cold, but like a murky cold lake. Um, so all I'm doing is just pouring um, the cream uh, colour in first. And then we mix up the same amount again, but we add the dark brown um, painting that we had from before. And then we pour that into the back and that will, and what you do is you pull and blend that in together and you get a very nice murky looking pond, lake, water feature, whatever you want to call it. Now, after about 20 minutes, you'll see loads of little bubbles come into the surface. The way that you pop them is just with a little blowtorch uh, and that gets rid of them. Now for the models for this piece, um, I'm going to need to use a 3D printer. Now the 3D printer I'm going to be using was sent to me by Gearbest. It's the Quiditec Shadow 5.5. I have been using this for quite a while now, um, a couple of weeks, and I'm going to be printing off a Geralt model. Um, this compared to the Egglu Mars, quality wise, as in in the prints, I'm not seeing much difference. However, where I do see a difference is in the actual quality of the printer. Um, it just feels far more robust. It's solid. Uh, everything's metal on it. It has got a filter as well, which seems to work as in, I mean, I can't really smell it anyway, uh, but with the lid on, it is very, there's no smells whatsoever. And also it runs a lot quieter, uh, which is also an added bonus. So thanks Gearbest, if you'd like to check out the printer, do check my links below. There is an affiliated link if you'd like to buy that printer. Now, just after washing these and uh, having a quick through, uh, quick rinse through, um, I gave them a prime and then I just started painting them. And as you can see, the detail on this model is, is bloody lovely. If you'd like to um, know, know where I got this model from, all the details will be in the uh, links below. I just chucked some red on his knees, um, it's like a brownie red that I use, I think it's called Hull Red from Vallejo, um, and then I just use a saddle brown on all the uh, leather areas, and just do it a very quick paint job, however the detail on this model um, is immense. Um, to say I've printed this at home, um, I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh, and I'm sure once it's painted you can see the details yourself. I'm not a great painter by any stretch of the imagination, um, but just a couple of colours and a couple of washers, it brings this model out to a, a, an awesome finish. And I did enjoy painting it, spent a good few hours painting him. I also printed up a Le Chien, um, just for another model in the background, just to set the scene a little bit. And this printed just as nice, um, and I'll, try, I'll find the link as well for that model, uh, which you'll see in a second. The next day, uh, I peel off the masking tape. As you can see, the glue has gone through the masking tape and stuck it down, so I sand that off later and I just paint it back black. We super glue uh, Geralt and the other models in place. And that's about it. I don't feel like I need to do much more to it. Maybe a couple more details here and there, but I'm very happy with the build. I'll leave you with the uh, sample footage of the uh, diorama and I'll see you at the end. So guys, I hope you've liked this video. Um, I'd like you all to go and subscribe to Real Terrain Hobbies. Um, <laughs> obviously, we've both had the same idea, we've both received printers, and it's <laughs> such a funny coincidence that we've both decided to make more or less the same diorama. Um, these things happen, <laughs> but it'll be nice to see how another terrain guy builds a similar diorama using different techniques and everything else. It'll be good to see it different. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to watching it. I'd also like to thank Scar Productions for supplying me with the awesome metal cover um, of uh, Toss a Coin to the Witcher. Um, also, check that guy out and give him a sub as well. If you'd like to replicate this diorama or replicate the look on, on your pieces, 
do consider using my shop below, guys. That's my main form of income. Um, so if you'd like to support me, use my shop. All the links to the products used and everything will be there. Okay, guys? If you're in America, if you're in Australia or any other country, um, look for my resellers, which will also be in the links. The printer, the Quiditech, um, there will be an affiliated link there as well. So if you're interested in purchasing a 3D printer, I'm enjoying that printer. It is a little bit slower than the uh, Elegoo Mars, but overall... It just feels better built. The quality is not much difference uh, that I'm seeing yet. But however, I'm no pro with printers yet, so I'm not. I'm not going to give any advice as such. But the, both 3D printers are brilliant. However, the the Quiditech it just feels more substantial, um, and I'm sure people that a lot of the reviews that I'm seeing that people with the Quiditech are saying exactly the same thing. Okay, guys. Um, so that's that. If you want to buy any sort of games workshop or anything else as well, do check out my um, affiliate with uh, Element Games where I get a cut back every time you shop with uh, Element Games. And there's also Patreon, so if you're not into any of that, you can help me by uh, following me on Patreon where you get loads of Discord um, access. Um, we also do like exclusive products every now and again uh, and uh, occasional discounts to uh, patrons. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like any more footage like this, if you'd like me to do any more dioramas, if you've got any ideas for any, pop them in the comments below. That'd be awesome. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you for the next video. Love, love, love.